Great. So let me begin. Uh, I'm pleased and proud to be speaking with Dr. Tom McPhee, a true uh, leader in the profession and a unique person with unique information that we all need to hear. Uh, when uh, the topic of Cairo Summit came up, Dr. McPhee was one of the top people that I thought had so much to offer and give us. Uh, uh, Tom, if I may, uh, what, uh, how would you see the summit and what you can offer to everybody? Well, I'm just really excited that you uh, invited me because I have a passion for chiropractic and I see that chiropractic is, uh, is losing its um, voice. And I think the chiropractic summit is a way to uh, encourage chiropractors and to give them back their voice in the community. And one way that we do that is by making sure that chiropractors are successful that they know how to manage money, that they know how to use money so that it talks for them 24 seven. One of the things I've noticed as a teacher and a writer and all that in the profession is that you can have a doctor who's absolutely incredibly gifted in, as a healer, and yet they fail in practice. So this is what's very bothersome to me and you too, I'm sure. It is, it's very bothersome because you know, when we were going back in school years ago, we all wanted to help people. That was our passion. And yet um, we can't help people if we become like Benjamin Franklin, part of the poor class. We have to rise up and be able to monetarily support ourselves so that we can get our message, the chiropractic message out there and actually be able to help people. I think your point, uh, yeah, you tied it very nicely. Chiropractic message and helping people and being financially independent. Uh, you really can't separate the two. I don't want to see chiropractors make money if they don't know what they're doing. Yes. I, I don't think they can help people to the degree they can and be very financially successful if they really don't have at least one part of their foot, <laughs> one foot in the, uh, per, in the philosophy and understand the why, not just the how. Yes. You know, one of the old words in English is W-E-L-E. -E, and from that word, we get health, wealth, prosperity, and abundance. Um, you can't really separate them. And if we try to say, oh, well, I'm just going to go out there on this service mission and not really realize that we have to financially support ourselves so that we can help more people, then we've really failed in the mission of being able to help as many people as we could. Absolutely. And right now, with the, the threatened loss of our freedoms, and uh, not just uh, individually, but as a profession, I think that we need to have people who can financially support fighting for freedom. Yes, I agree with that. You know, years ago, uh, Dr. Corn, um, I mentored under Ian Toughness in Cumberland, Wisconsin, and he gave me a little book to read called The Richest Man in Babylon. And um, at the time, Toughness was treating people from all over the world and his community in Cumberland would set those people up in their houses for several months at a time while he, he got them well. And um, he gave me that book. He said, Tom, read this book. You'll never have to worry about money again. And uh, to my hall of shame, I didn't understand that book for 20 years. So that's one of the things I wanna share with people is the message of the richest man in Babylon because it changed my life and I know it can change everyone else's. I like your honesty. <laughs> we all, we've all done things and not done things to our detriment. Yes, it's, uh, it's you know, but you know, the path to uh, success is paved with the stones of failure. And if we uh, learn from our failures instead of just repeating them again, we become wise. Otherwise, we just become foolish. I remember when I heard about your program, uh, I ignored it for quite a while. And uh, finally, a, a whole weird bit of circumstances came together. And uh, I thought, oh, my God, this is something I should pay attention to. This is very valuable. But I think we all have resistance to change. We do. And we're, we have been programmed a certain way. And we... We pride ourselves in the chiropractic profession for having an open mind, but then we turn and we practice uh, the way we have been programmed in so many other areas of our life, and finances are one of those. We, we practice 
uh, allopathic finances <laughs> instead of chiropractic finances or vitalistic finances. Well, you tie it in with vitalism, and I think that's incredible. And uh, I think you followed uh, one vitalistic uh, economist, a rabbi, Rabbi Lapin, who says money is uh, energy and is a yeah. sign of gratitude. In fact, as Rabbi Lapin teaches in his book, The, the, uh, the Ten Commandments of Making Money, he talks about money and blood are the same word in Hebrew because they do the same thing in their own environment. Really? I didn't know that. So it has to circulate. It has to be under control. And if we let our money circulate out of our control, that doesn't spell real good wealth for us, no more than if our blood was circulating outside our body. It's like a financial subluxation. Absolutely. Yes. And the weird thing is about your system, you can have, and just studying it, you can have a lot of money and not be benefiting you can have a little money and be benefiting tremendously it is you know um, my mentor in the financial world was someone named nelson nash and um, i met nelson when he was in his 80s and we became good friends but he always said that financially um, we need to compare ourselves with what everybody else is doing because what is wealth you know you can look at some of the wealthier people in our society and um, you know, we have, you know, uh, um, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and the Soroses and all those people, they're in a completely class by themselves. So if everyone compared to the, themselves to them, no one would be wealthy, right? right? But we can be wealthy with what we have, and that's what we're responsible for, what we've been given, how we manage it. Because the promise universally is that if we manage what we've been given well, we'll be given more. Can you just in a few words summarize what you're going to be speaking about and how chiropractic, the chiropractic summit will benefit others? So we're going to be talking about something that is almost as uh, big a hex as a chiropractor is to medicine, and that is life insurance. <laughs> okay. So when people hear life insurance, they go running under the rug. In fact, is a lot of people say that life insurance agents are rated just a little bit below a used car salesman. But we're not so much trying to sell people life insurance as we are to help them understand fundamental principles about money. And I always tell people, you can do everything I teach you without life insurance. But why would you want to throw away the death benefit and leave a legacy at the same time? This is very powerful information. It's going to, I think, shock everybody. It did me when I heard about it. And uh, I've been following uh, Dr. McPhee's advice and suggestions for a number of years now, and I've never looked back. It was, it's just ideal. And uh, thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share in your wisdom and to share it with doctors all over the world. And this is what we're excited about. So thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you so much for letting me share here.